Ah, hello, hello. Uh, I'm Isaac, in case that wasn't enough of a hint. Um, I'm a young guy, and people often ask me, Isaac, why are you so angry for someone so young? And uh, I always say the same thing. Fuck off. <laughs> Some people say I'm paranoid. Um, not to my face, but I know they're saying it. <laughs> I'm a big fan of contradictions, right? Like I, got, I got an email the other day with the heading Gentle Reminder. Um, in caps lock, um, which is like the work equivalent of shouting, calm down! Um, but pe but I, pe people are like that, I find, you know? Pe people are like that. I got, I got a text from my GP the other day uh, saying, please contact, us, please contact us immediately. We have to speak to you. you know, it's an emergency. And I, was like, I was very worried. So, so I, I, I ring up and I'm on, I got put on hold because the GP doesn't know the meaning of the word immediately. And, and eventually I, I get through and, and, and I'm like, so I got this text saying I had to contact you immediately. What, what's going on there? Oh, oh yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Well, we saw on your record that you've had problems with anxiety in the past, so uh, we just want to check you're all right. <laughs> I'm not now. Just sort of ring up paranoid schizophrenics to go, we just want you to know we are watching you. It's, uh, <laughs> it's true that I've, you know, I have, I, have, I have struggled with sort of uh, depression and anxiety problems in the past. About a year ago, went through a very dark period of my life. Uh, or, or some people call it winter. Um, <laughs> and for me personally, the most annoying thing about like, feeling down like this is that, you know, I kind of feel like I don't really have an excuse. Like, I had quite a nice childhood, you know? Uh, and like, sometimes that's like, quite surprising when I say that to people because, um, so like, growing up, my dad was a drug addict and an alcoholic. Like, I, I really, I, he's recovered now. He's much less fun, don't worry. But, <laughs> I, but you know, people say, well, so growing up in that environment, how, how could you have had a nice childhood? But the thing is, like, Yes, my dad was a drug addict, but a rich one. <laughs> and he gave me lots of attention. You know, I, I honestly think that nothing prepares you for playing with your kids quite like cocaine. It's, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, he, he even gave me some of his drugs once. And it doesn't get much better than that at a 12-year-old's birthday party. <laughs> and, you know, I, I mean, and the thing is, honestly, if a drug addict shares their drugs with you, that's real love. <laughs> you know? That's, that's real love, because drug addicts, they love drugs. Oh, they love them. And nothing those drugs will do will ever take away that love. You know, the drug, uh, drugs make you lose your job, still love the drugs. The drugs make your family leave you, still love the drugs. The drugs destroy your liver. No one would love a dog if it ate your liver. I just, <laughs> just find someone that looks at you the way that drug addicts look at drugs. That's the, that's the basic take home message there. Um, Speaking of which, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out there. I'm on, I'm on the dating scene. I'm actually quite picky when it comes to dating because uh, I'm a Leo. So I can only date people who are stupid enough to believe in star signs. Um, <laughs> I've actually got a girlfriend now, though. Told your applause. Um, I, me and my girlfriend are in a polyamorous relationship, uh, which I found out the other day when I checked her phone. Um, <laughs> For those of you who don't know, polyamory is like the opposite of monogamy. It means like you don't just like love and share your life with one person, you also fuck my best friend. Um, <laughs> so that's interesting, that's, that's, that's an interesting fact, isn't it? Uh, uh, no, another interesting fact about me, um, I once lived in China. That's interesting, isn't it? Only 1.4 billion people can say that. So, <laughs> when I was there, I really struggled with my language. I kept telling people to fuck off. Um, <laughs> I was an English teacher when I was there, right? I was, I was teaching English in a primary school, and uh, one of the lessons, I was teaching the kids about family relations, like mother, sister, brother, uncle, aunt, stuff like that. So I thought it'd be good if I got like, pictures of my family to show the kids, um, except it, it wasn't pictures of my family. It was pictures of strangers I found on the internet. And you know what's really weird? Looking for a grandma on the internet. <laughs> Just like, yeah, that lady will be my grandma. I'm there at the front of the class, I'm like, this is my grandma, who is this? And everyone says in unison, Judy Dench! <laughs> I'd probably say my favourite thing about uh, teaching English in China is when you ask the kids a question and they respond in Chinese. So, for example, I'm there at the front of the class, I've got a picture of an apple, right? And I'm like, what is this? And everyone says, ping guo, which means apple. You're welcome. Um, and the reason I like it so much when they respond in Chinese, it just makes me think, what do they think I'm doing? <laughs> do they think I'm just there like... <laughs> 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 
what is this? <laughs> I was trying to learn Chinese, right? Maybe they didn't ask what it is. You know, once a week the foreigner comes in and we, we, we teach him Chinese. It's a, it's a learning experience for everyone, you know. I don't know, it's confusing though. Hey, but it's confusing where we live in, isn't it? You know, there's lots of things I don't understand about the world. I don't understand why it's okay to touch the bellies of pregnant women. It's not okay to touch the bellies of non-pregnant women. Why does it make it better that there's a child involved? There's lots of things I don't understand about the world. I don't understand the things people say, right? You know, for example, aren't all marriages arranged? You don't just turn up, do you? I don't understand the things people say. I had a friend the other day, he saw someone he didn't like, he was like, ah, I don't like that person. I wouldn't piss on them if they're on fire. I wouldn't piss on them if they're on fire. Which I thought was probably for the best. Because if I was on fire, one of the few things that can make me more annoyed would be if someone pissed on me. Like, I don't really think that a small stream of piss is enough to put out a human ablaze. And in any case, you know, we live in a society with lots of running water. What, why is piss your first choice? I, the phrase should be, you know, the phrase should be, shouldn't it? I wouldn't piss on him if he got sung by a jellyfish. Yeah? See? That makes sense. Except, plot twist, out of nowhere, no, that doesn't work either. Because pissing on jellyfish stings is an urban myth. Yeah? You're actually not supposed to piss on someone if they've been sung by a jellyfish. It actually makes it worse. What you're supposed to do is piss on the jellyfish. <laughs> not for any medical benefit. Just to show you, mate, you got his back. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. That's, that's been my time. <laughs> <laughs>